Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table, or I guess welcome for the first time for those who are new to the channel. Hello, hello. We're playing a new game today, which means not new game. Okay, the game's been out for a while, but new to the collection. Shout out to Jim Benny in the chat for sending this game over to the channel uh, as a gift for us that we're going to play. What? Uh, hey, Sacabra. But anyways, welcome everyone joining live. Uh, we're going to be playing through... Aventuria? Avent? Aventuria? Basically, adventure without the D and then an IA on the end, uh, just to kind of twist it up. Uh, but, anyways, this, uh, this game, uh, yeah, we got from Jim. It's an adventure card game uh, based on a role playing game. So, I guess it's the thing. I'm not really into role playing games, I, I, I don't play RPGs other than the ones digitally. Um, but,. Physical RPGs, playing in the books, I don't do that. But I think it's part of the DNA if you're going to start an RPG company and you make RPGs. Uh, you eventually have to make an adventure card game based on your RPG IP. It seems like the cookie cutter thing to do. So Warhammer, for example, you got to make that Warhammer Quest card game, which eventually was rebranded into Heroes of Tirnoth. Uh, if you're from the Pathfinder fantasy you know, role-playing game, which is spun off of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, you make Pathfinder the adventure card game. If you have a role-playing game called The Dark Eye, which is in a fantasy world similar to Pathfinder, similar to Dungeons & Dragons, uh, your next step as a company is you need to make an adventure card game of that. Seems to be like the standard thing. So this is one of those. Uh, yeah, that's all That's all I kind of know. But uh, I have played this game once. Um, I, I separate out, Jim was cool enough to send over, there's like Kickstarter promos in, in what he sent and, some, and three different expansions, maybe four different expansions, like a Kickstarter scenario, uh, all this stuff. But I separated that stuff out. Uh, so we just have the base game today, Aventuria. And this is a game from Ulysses Spiel. Spiel, I, I don't know this company. I don't have anything from them, but they're supposedly their, their claim to fame is they have what is called the Dark Eye, which is the German kind of equivalent of Dungeons and & Dragons. And it's been around for like decades. This is all I know. I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I got from researching the game quickly to figure out what the heck is this and why I've never, never heard of it. It's also a Kickstarter game. Uh, and it feels like a Kickstarter game. Um, yeah, it, it's a Kickstarter game. And... Yeah, not much else to say. I I want to I want to play it to show you, so I don't want to get into give out all my thoughts so far. I've only played the tutorial scenario one time, like the intro single act adventure, which we are playing today. So there will be some spoilers for it, uh, but they're not a big deal spoilers, I don't think. It's just like a little teaching scenario. It doesn't even use all the kind of features and components of the game. Uh, so today's stream might be kind of short. It might be very simple, but it's it's kind of a setup to get you an idea of how the game is before we go into it tomorrow, uh, where we're gonna start a live campaign of the three act adventure uh, that is included in the core set. So basically all this week, we're gonna be playing everything in the core set other than, um, I, short stream is, I mean like not seven hours, I don't think. I assume it'll be around the two to three, but I could be wrong. I, I, I didn't pay attention to the time when I was playing the tutorial scenario when I was learning. Obviously, I was looking up rules. We'll be doing that today, I'm sure. Uh, the game's not that complex, but the rules aren't 100% clear. The rules seem kind of like... Uh, they fall in the category of not streamlined and a little fiddly, but it's not that complicated. And if you miss something here and there, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> yeah, the stream should be only two to three hours tops, I would think. But tomorrow's, I, I don't know how long an act of, of a normal adventure plays. I haven't played any of it. I'm going in tomorrow, spoiler free, for that second act. So we're going to read story and make choices and all that stuff uh, and be surprised. And maybe get our butts kicked. I don't know. But uh, we'll experience that all together starting tomorrow, live, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's already scheduled. Playlist link is down in the video description. You can set a reminder for the next streams already. I scheduled two. I'm assuming it'll take two streams, maybe three, maybe only one. I don't know. We're going to start at 1 p.m. tomorrow, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and we'll just keep playing and see how long a single act takes normally. 
and then between acts you get to like kind of spend some points uh, and then we jump into the next act and you make some choices you do a combat you upgrade you can get uh, experience points in this game and you can use them to kind of like beef yourself up change cards in your deck as you go through a campaign um, so we'll see no Dan I built in the buffer for the live stream all right two to three hours with the live stream buffer I think but again, we'll be describing how this game works today. I'll be going on an overview of it, then we'll play it. You'll see how it works throughout the playthrough. Feel free to ask questions live uh, as we're playing through this. And those who are watching later, or those in the chat who have played this game and know, feel free to challenge me on things I've done. Timestamp it if you're watching later uh, in the comments section down below if I goofed up anything or I had a question we couldn't figure it out. Because um, it will help us in the next playthroughs. It'll help other people who find this game or who go to YouTube searching how the heck do you play this game I just bought and are looking to how to play it correctly. I may miss some things, of course. I'm not perfect. I haven't played this game for years. It's been out for years. I literally only have played it once. I've read through the rules like three times, but they're not the best rules. Um, and another thing, kind of a little complaint. Maybe not little. I, it's super annoying. It, it ticks me right off. But uh, when I get a game... And I go to BGG and I see this. Let me show you. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you. It's red flag. Red flag for a game. This is what I do when, I, when I'm looking into a game. So I go to BGG. I look up the game, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, the game. All right. It's, it's been around since 2016. And it's rated 2,501 overall. Okay, that's not bad for a generic fantasy dueling card game with a co-op... Uh, mode that you can play as an adventure, which I should have mentioned, we're playing the co-op solo adventure version of the game today. The dueling mode, no thanks. Don't care about it. Don't want to ever play it. I don't need another Magic the Gathering clone. There's so many other games that do it better. I, I don't want to even touch that aspect of the game. But you have to know that aspect of the game to play this. So my fear is the fact that this is a dueling card game primarily in the rule book, and that's how they present this game originally, uh, that may have scared some people away because this game didn't do great on Kickstarter by any means. All the multiple times it's been on Kickstarter. And I guarantee it won't do great the next time it's on Kickstarter. Because it's just so, so many games like this. There's just so many in this game. I don't know if it has anything special over other games to make it worth, you know, that time. So I want to be upfront about it. I'm going to play this game. This game is fun. But do not think I'm putting this game on the channel uh because i went out and researched this game i bought this game and i have to play this game and i need to show it to you i'm playing this game because jim was awesome and he sent us a copy he figured i would like playing this so far i do like playing this so far i do like playing this uh, but i'm all, i've only experienced a tutorial and the other thing is i put this on a patreon poll uh where our producers of the channel the people who support this channel keep it going uh they voted for what game i play solo next i threw this on there even though i would have played it anyway at some point um, they threw it, they voted it to be the number one game out of like 10 or so games that I put on that poll. So whatever that tells you, uh, this was the most demanded game that I get on the table out of all the games that I wanted to dive into solo next. Uh, this one won. So I don't know what that tells you, but, uh, you guys are awesome. And J yes, it's Jim's fault. So here's the thing. Some of you I know in the discord bought this game. Some of the supporters of the channel because Jim sent this over just because this game was opened on a live stream <laughs> and is in my collection now. Some of you got this game and looked into it. So that, that gave me hope. When I saw you guys getting excited about it, I was like, oh, Jim knows. Jim knows what I like to play. So, but I just wanted to put that out there. I usually like to show off games on the channel that I've done the research, I, I, I would spend my own money on, and I would get to the channel. This is not one of those. It may be, but I don't know yet. I'm going this pretty new, so like, I'm experiencing this with you guys kind of thing. I, I didn't do tons of research to add this game to my collection by any means. I doubt I would have backed it on Kickstarter if I even knew what it was before Jim sent it over. But I was totally shocked. You guys saw me open it on the December Q&A. With that out of the way, let's continue on. But I just want to, I just want to be upfront and be honest. So I, I don't want you guys thinking like, wow, Rob, Rob's playing this game must be the best, best thing ever. This, this is the game you should buy. I don't think it's the game you should buy. Probably if you want a fantasy adventure kind of game I, I personally so far think lord of the rings lcg is like like you know so far from what i've seen it is like even the base box to base box so far it's like yeah that game seems like you know and that game's older much older and i feel like it's 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 a better better product but i, I mean i could be wrong but uh, that's my thoughts 
All right. Um, okay, we're on Board Game Geek. Uh, so I see it's rated this, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But then you go to here, you go to the forums, and I've showed this kind of stuff before. <clears throat> so you go to the forums, and you're like, oh, there's 221 forum posts. Well, that's not a lot for a game that's been out for four plus years, five years now ish. Uh, and almost half of those posts are rules questions. That's not a good sign. <laughs> That's a sign that, oh man, it's going to be one of those games where I try to play it quick on the channel and I'm going to be looking up rules and there's going to be contradicting posts in BGG. Sure enough, there was. Uh, so yeah, there's 82 rules questions out of 221 posts for this game. And it's a Kickstarter game. You assume there'd be hundreds, if not thousands of posts when the Kickstarter hype is happening for a Kickstarter game. Uh, but all this could garner is 221 posts, period. That's how many people decided they want to post anything about the game, and half those were people who were confused uh, with the game. So, yeah. And I, and I came here looking like, oh, let me, let me see if there's some cool solo deck builds. Uh, no. There's two strategy posts. This game, I see lots of people saying this game needs more love, needs more attention. So whoever Lu Ulysses' spiel is needs to, uh, needs to get this game out in front of people more. They're not doing a good enough job uh, pumping this game, I guess. Or the, there's not enough unique stuff about the game. Uh, but that's just my thoughts. All right. So that, that's what I, I have to say. So uh, there's another issue. When I started looking in the rules forum, so I, I had some rules questions. Uh, I've learned there is a first edition of this game, which I have. Uh, last year, I think in 2019, they did a Kickstarter, uh, which I have here, actually. So this game has come to Kickstarter multiple times in English. Uh, every time I could find, uh, it has done maybe 400, 500 backers, nothing crazy. Um, for those who are curious what this game is, uh, it's a game that's been to Kickstarter multiple times. They keep coming out with expansions. So obviously there's an audience there maybe is buying it at retail. Uh, so they keep making expansions, they make on Kickstarter, and then I see them in retail. Like they're at my local game stores. So this game is out there in retail. It's on Amazon, it's out there, okay? For those that don't know about it, but on Kickstarter, it doesn't seem to make a splash at all. Um, but in the most recent Kickstarter I could find in August, they did a whole second edition of this game. Uh, and a scumbag move they did was, I can't seem to find the latest PDF where they refined the rules. Uh, they hid that behind a paywall. So you can't get the PDF for the base game with the adventures in it for some reason. They didn't want to have a PDF ready that in case you got the game and were missing the rules or you lost the rule book, uh, you would have to, I guess, email customer support and maybe you'd get a PDF or a replacement book. Um, but there is no PDF for this game that fully contains all the content of the rules, uh, including the adventure. Uh, and then they made a new rule book, but that is hidden behind a paywall. You had to back a Kickstarter to get an upgrade pack and pay for a physical rule book they don't they don't make the pdfs full, properly available which i was not a fan of seeing that they did that um so in the rules uh you will have people in the rules forums asking about first edition or second edition uh and not sure what rules or what so i'm just trying to tell you this because i may be playing and doing things based on the first edition rules i have and the rules update document i found but some of the player guides and stuff i've been using uh aren't fully up to date so yeah, if, if you're watching this and you know you have the latest and greatest version of the game that came out, I guess, in 2019 or 2020, um, you might have slightly different components. You'll have errated cards. You'll have cards that have changed costs and changed values. You'll have a different rule book. Um, so yeah, look for the second edition of this game if you're trying to buy this game. You might accidentally get the first edition, which supposedly there's some issues with it, which I have here, but I'm still gonna play it with the first edition stuff and try my best, but I might, I might be doing some mixed rule stuff based on what I could find. That's, that's that. All right. So, uh, if we see here, so I have, I have the rules PDF. I have the rules PDF. They have available online, like I said, but it doesn't include the adventure scenario. So I'll be, I'll be reading this out of the physical book. Um, and I found this PDF, which has the rules changes on a one pager, supposedly that's in version 1.3 of the game which I don't know if that means second, like I think version 2.0 is a game people might have. So I don't know, it's confusing. It's confusing. I don't know what version is out there. 
Uh, so I did find this. So there are some rules changes. We'll deal with this brief respite stuff later. Uh, and there's there's just a, a, some small rules based on deck building uh, with reward cards and fate points between adventures or at an adventure end. So I just want to throw that there. Okay, let's get down to the table. And let me catch up on the chat. I think that's all I really want to say ahead of time. Um, but yeah, let me just see what the live chat's saying here. Oh, so John's saying, wait, wait, wait. Rob will play the games we send him? No, not necessarily. No, 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 no. I will play every game that I've been sent, yes. And I have been sent some games with some of our Patreon supporters. I, I don't encourage it. I, I don't need to be sent games like that. Uh, but the game still has to, I still have to approve it to kind of be on the channel. And this one fits that. So say that what you will. But after I read the rules once, uh, looked at what the game was, I then decide to put it on that poll for our Patreons to decide on it. If they didn't vote for it, we may or may not see this game at some point in the future. But Jim, Jim, Jim did a good job. He he did the research, I guess, and figured out like that I, I would play this game uh, on the channel. But that, that's not true. I've gotten games in the past that may or may never get to the channel just based on... Right now, some of them aren't making it on the channel because of COVID, and I want to play them with three, four, or five players. Um, but... Other than that, yeah, no, no guarantee. And don't try to send me Monopoly or Candyland. It's not going to work. Maybe Candyland. Because, you know, if you have, like, you know, it's kind of fantasy themed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bob, they're not rules, Rob. They're advisories. <laughs> uh, Jim, the rules aren't, like, bad, bad rules. They're just not clear. Like, they're not streamlined. They're kind of, like, all over the place because it's, like, in the adventure section of the rules, they'll be like, yeah, here's what's different from the dual mode. And then they'll mention something else. They'll be like, just refer to the dual section. And you're like, what? And you go to the dual section. There's no index, no way to quickly find where that is. You got to just like leaf through the pages again. I can show you guys here. So here's, here's number one red flag. This is bad, bad rule book etiquette right here. Okay. Nice, nice reference on the back, you think. Okay. Until you see this junk. This is garbage right here. Combat turn. All heroes simul uh, simultaneously perform phases one to four of the dual rules. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for leaving that out. And sticking your big dumb logos here to waste space. Like, why is this here? Why not just expand your reference and actually give me what steps one to four of the dual rules are? No, 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 no. They put the dual rules. Uh, if you want the dual rules reference sheet, that's in the middle of the book. So you got to go here. And I guess you fold the book over, and there's your dual rules. So you can leave this out when you're playing adventure mode, even though half these rules you don't really need because they've changed. So you got to go back to here to remember what, what goes on. It's just like they should have had a proper reference on the back where it's like maybe they show all the steps and then mark which ones are adventure only or which ones are dual only or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you don't need your credits here. You don't need your logo here. It's a big rule book. Like they could have fit so much reference on the back. Uh, but they got lazy with it and asked you to turn. So like, I, as cool, I can reference this, but then the fact that I have to go into the book to find parts from the reference, uh, yeah, that's lame. <laughs> so people made these on Board Game Geek, which is nice. So I, I have this, is the people on Board Game Geek are amazing. And for some reason, like companies need to like ask the fans, like, you know, what would you like for a reference? You know, what would you like with our game that you constantly look up? So there's this that exists. There's also this compendium that I found in the file section of BGG, which is supposedly not fully up to date, but I'm gonna use it anyway. And somebody broke down, like kind of went through the rules and, and kind of pulled out all the stuff and, and they'll highlight things that are specific for, you know, adventure mode only or whatever. So we, we have this here. So this supposedly contains like everything you need to know from the whole rule book on two pages. Uh, yeah. But for anyone interested in the game, I don't know why it keeps going so dark. Uh, I don't know what is happening. The book? The book's doing Oh, okay. Anyways, all right. So, uh, yeah, we are going to play 
Adventuria, which is a uh, adventure card game, like I said. Uh, we're playing it solo only. I'm only running one hero. I'm only running one hero uh, who I've chosen uh, L'Oreal, Treetop Glint, who is like a elf scout. Okay. Uh, that's, who I'm, that's who I'm playing with. So I said that, Bob. I said, I've said for the stream, I was going to be o doing an overview of the game, and that will add some time. But I might be doing a longer overview than I will of this, the actual gameplay. Uh, but I'll, I'll get to it quick. Um, so yeah. So overview of the game, where basically there's a, there's a dual mode to start. Dual mode, okay. Dual rules, you can play this as a dueling game. Uh, yeah, whatever. And, but you got to know all these rules. And they actually recommend you play the dual game before you go to the adventure game. Okay, then the adventure game has its own rules. Uh, and, and you know it has its own combat changes and that kind of stuff. So what we're going to be doing is we play with a pre-built deck uh, That is specific to the hero. There are deck building rules to this game. I have not explored them uh, I'm just playing with the standard first edition core set deck for this hero Okay, you shuffle it up 30 cards max are in this deck if we uh, throughout the campaign We'll earn experience we buy we get reward cards uh, which I have off to the side here. You can find these rewards uh, and you can add them to your deck, but you have to adhere to the deck building rules uh, for each character is only allowed to have a certain amount of equipment and stuff in the deck. Um, and you'll have to take cards out to make sure your deck doesn't go over 30. And that is in the updated rules uh, that I found online. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, and you can see here for each hero, you can see here for each hero, where is it? Uh, on the, the building your own decks page, uh, each hero that comes in the base set, there's four of them. I'm, I'm obviously playing this one. The Elf Scout, ES, is the initials you look for like on the card. Um, but she's allowed to have like six light close combat weapons, two medium. These are like all the maximums if you're deck building. So you can have a total of 30 cards in there and you're allowed to pull cards from these guys' decks. Uh, but there's no extra cards that come in the core set. So if you're going to be playing with four characters, you're using up all the player cards in the core set until you start buying expansions. Um, but she, like the one I'm playing with, is not allowed to ever use heavy armor, for example. So if I get a heavy armor reward, I gotta toss it. I can't use it because I'm playing solo. I can't just give it to another character in my party. Um, but obviously, if you're using more characters, better odds you're gonna get some rewards that you'll be able to use. So you have to adhere to these based on the character type you're playing. Okay. This game generally is gonna be a lot of skill checks by rolling dice. It's all it is. It's like you check your skill. You have a certain stat. So in adventure mode, I have these stats. This is uh, Lariel's, um, her different stats for body control, crafting, knowledge, perception, persuade, stealth, survival, and willpower. This game, like I said, is, is a derivative of a role-playing game, The Dark Eye. Uh, it's very much like a role-playing game. I feel like it's just a, uh, like it looks very similar to Pathfinder adventure card game. Anyone who's played that, based on my research, I've never played that game, but this feels exactly like how that game looked to me. And very similar to Heroes of Tyranoth, AKA Warhammer Quest. I've played Heroes of Tyranoth. I've not played Warhammer Quest, but I know it's like a reskin kind of game of that. Uh, feels very similar to that. So anyone who's like wondering what kind of game this is, it's one of those. So you can build a deck or you play with a pre-built deck and we're gonna be attacking henchmen and stuff, trying to compete missions, uh, racing against time. Each campaign, each adventure will have a different setup, building different decks of henchmen, different requirements, different leaders you'll fight against, maybe demons. Uh, like a boss fight or something, uh, and little skill checks, like tons of skill checks. You're just checking. You can increase your skills. You can play weapons. You can lay out cards in front of you to help support you. They're called assets. You can play one-time events from hand. Uh, standard stuff. Standard stuff. Oh, Buell, okay. Buell knows a Pathfinder adventure card game. Okay, yeah, which they had a, a second version of that come out in like 2019, early 2019. Uh, but then that sold out. It, it supposedly went out of stock really quick. I couldn't find it in stock. Then I just gave up on it. Um, I just lost interest to try to track that game down. And I know they reprinted it, but it, it just looked very generic. I, I don't know, something about it. Just lots of dice rolling and stats. It didn't seem to have much flavor and theme. It was very, very generic is the word I want to say. Very generic. All, all those, even, even Heroes of Tyranoth, I like that game a lot. But generic is the word that I would use to like describe that game too. <laughs> but anyways, all right. I'm still going to have fun with this. I, I, I promise you that. <laughs> uh, I had fun yesterday playing with it. 
Okay. So we shoveled up. Uh, what else we need to do? Um, we have, uh, where is this? There is a set of the adventure. All right. So we have these things called fate points. We set them up. They are used for, you can spend them to draw cards, to re-roll dice at certain times. Uh, you can also use them to uh, gain an endurance, which endurance is the economy of the game. So cards are kind of dual use in this game. It's similar to, it's similar to like Magic or any LCG, competitive LCG I've played, um, or even cooperative LCG, uh, where the resources are cards. Like, instead of like for Marvel Champions, let's say, you know, you have a bunch of cards in hand, and some of them you're going to use to pay for other cards. This game is similar. Uh, there's a phase where I'm going to play cards as endurance cards. They go face down, I kind of lose them for the rest of the game, and they're just stuck here unless they get discarded or whatever. But I spend these face down cards to pay for other cards. So this card costs one, and to pay for it, I have to exhaust one of my endurance cards that I'm going to build up. So similar to Magic the Gathering, you're in, which I've never played by the way, I just know of it, uh, but I know you get lands which every other game kind of has some kind of resource economy in the game. Uh, in this, it's these face down endurance cards, but I guess like this prevents that whole mana screw business where I'm hoping to draw the cards that are gonna put into play that are gonna give me resources. In this game, it's kind of neat. You have to make the tough choice. You know, you're looking at a hand of like say five cards and you have to decide which one of these cards I'm gonna actually commit. And you can only up to two per round, you can commit to your endurance. So let's say I look at this card, I'm like, man, I really like this card. I would never get rid of this one because this draws me cards. Uh, I'd be crazy to do that. But uh, you, let's say I didn't want these cards. Uh, I, I could make the tough choice of putting them down as endurance. And then when I go to play cards, I spend them to get cards into play, you know, and then we keep going on. And then I draw more cards next round. And you got to do kind of the same thing. You can choose to put no cards into endurance, one card or up to two cards. Uh, but you have to make that tough choice every time you play, like, hmm, I got this card, but but will I build up my range attacks and, and use this towards that? Or am I better to not save for and just use it to help get other cards into play? So it's kind of neat. You won't get screwed because any card can become an economy card, which is neat. But then you say goodbye to that card. You're, you're, you're out with it for the rest of the game. In this game, I think it said in this game, uh, you don't shuffle your deck back. But I could be wrong. Um, I can't remember. But I think when you run out of your, car, your deck in this game, you're done. Like, you keep playing, but you can only play with what's, like, left in your hand. Um, you don't get to cycle your cards around. So even if your endurance cards are, are knocked away by a game effect by an enemy, they go to your discard pile, but it's, like, or out of the game or whatever, but you, you won't see them again, really. I could be wrong, though, but uh, that's my understanding. <laughs> Brian, I'm trying to be honest. Brian Van Beek's in the chat saying half an hour rant of why this is generic and not great, but then goes, I didn't say it wasn't great. I'm not sure if it's great or good yet. It is generic though. That's all I'm going to say. It feels very generic. Um, but then yes, I did say I'll have fun and enjoy it. So yeah, you can still have fun with a good and generic game. I'm just telling you, I want to be honest. Because I know, I know I, I'm very upfront. I'll tell you if a game is like stuff that's crap about a game or great about a game or how I feel about a game. I just want to be upfront to make you guys know that's not like I'm trying to like, you know, this game I got, it's the hotness. I, you know, yeah. But I, I still don't know my feelings on it. I need to play more of it is all I'm saying. So yeah. And I'm a slave to my supporters, according to Dan. <laughs> no Monopoly bones. No Monopoly. <laughs> So yeah, but again, thank you, Jim, for sending this over. It's a little cool game. I don't own Pathfinder. I didn't get Warhammer uh, Quest Adventure card game. I only have Heroes of Tirnoth, and they made no expansions for that because the game I don't think did very well. So this is like my first real like adventure card game of that line of adventure card games. So again, I, I yeah. <laughs> the only thing I can relate these to is like Heroes of Tirnoth or like Lord of the Rings LCG or even Arkham LCG, or, you know, Marvel Champions, those all feel like similar kind of games, right? You can, uh, you're kind of battling, you're battling the AI, and you're coming at them with a deck of cards, and you're making choices on the fly each round. That's what you do in this game. <sighs> okay. 
That's the advantage though. Bones is mentioning in the chat. I thought that too. It's hard to compare this 100% to Lord of the Rings LCG because this game doesn't have the chasing packs. It does have expansions. And I would argue, no, maybe it is similar because the core set of Lord of the Rings, let's say core set to core set, you're getting like three-ish scenarios to play and you can play them over and over again and you're getting enough cards you can kind of deck build but not fully and you're only getting so many heroes, like four heroes. It's very similar core set to core set. But once you start comparing Lord of the Rings LCG's ginormous amount of content and where they've taken that game, Compared to where this game is going, I don't know. I haven't played the expansions for this, but just it seems to me like from the videos I watched of later scenarios uh, from the publisher, they played some Kickstarter thing I watched. Uh, it feels very same as the scenarios I was playing in this, but I know there's probably twists and stuff, but uh, I don't know if it'll get as crazy as that. It, based on the following and the popularity, I, I doubt it gets there, but, um, but yeah, still fun. Yeah, exactly what I said. Like Magic the Gathering. This it feels the dual version of this while I was reading it seems like magic. Like a very magic kind of clone. Okay. Uh so let's uh let's actually get into this. Let's let's start here. Uh and I'll kind of go through the rules as they come up. Uh but in the book it has a short adventure where which we're gonna play today called Saving Sylvana. It's short adventure because it's literally like one act. But tomorrow on the live stream, we're going to try Adventure 1, Legacy, uh, Legacy of Wildenstein, which has one act, two acts, three acts, okay? And, I'm, and we're not going to spoil any of that stuff. I haven't seen any of it yet or read any of it, but we're going to get into there. I have played this one. There's only two pages. It has one combat, and then you're done. It has some story stuff ahead of time. So gather around. Gather around, kids. We're, we're going we're gonna to do some reading. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is my health dial, by the way. I know you guys are talking about components in the chat, I see. So my health dial, I start at 40. Uh, this is the first edition comes with these. The second edition, they got rid of these uh, because they come loose. Uh, and I know ways of fixing dials from playing FFG games for many years. Uh, I haven't done it on this one yet. This one's okay, but some of the character dials are kind of loose. They, you might bump them. They have that like Gloomhaven issue for some of the dials where they get, they, they just, you know, you pick them up and they turn and you're like, whoa, what value was that? Uh, but they have cards in the second edition, I think, to help you with that kind of like Star Realms and hero realms do um and yeah they, they come with these custom ish dice i mean it's really just a d20 to d6 but the six on the d6 is the eye the dark eye and uh the one is a critical on the d20 and that is a uh dark eye also uh and we have a bunch of tokens off the side here uh some doom and time counters we have some health and i forget what the other side are called um, but yeah, we got our counters off to the side, just so you guys know, and you'll see some of those come into play. All right, saving Sylvana. Alvana, in the year 993 BF, your friend Alric has asked you to help him rescue the beautiful Sylvana, who was abducted by vicious pirates. The tracks lead down the ladder and into a system of subterranean cellars. In the meantime, Alric remembers that he has an urgent matter to attend to and says... A hastily goodbye before you even made it far enough to kick in the first door. Behind the door, you look into the wrinkled face of a blue-skinned kobold in a bright yellow loincloth who is just talking to a group of goblins. After a short moment of shock, the kobold points in your direction and yells, Go get them! And the goblins quickly turns himself invisible. The goblins look at each other in hesitation, and then they take flight. Quickly, you try to intercept them. All right. So again, there's no PDF of this stuff. For some reason, the company hides this stuff. You can't find it online. I don't know why. It's lame. But we're going to just have to do this. And we're going to make a body control roll. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But uh, we're going we're gonna to look at our body control stat. And the cool thing in this game, the stats here are the maximum. So you want to try to roll less than that. So you could increase, for example, my body roll stat. Uh, or my body control stat, I could increase it with items or leveling up through the adventure. Uh, as we'll see here, I have my hero document sheet, you know, for Lariel, aka fans of the channel will know she's Mrs. Legoland, by the way. Uh, I, I found that out in the lore. Um, 
And here's all the starting stats, but you can raise them with experience points later. So right now my body control is 10, for example, but it, it could go up. And I wanna roll, when I do a check or a test or a skill roll or whatever they call them, uh, it's always called different stuff based on what's going on. Um, but I will do a roll and I got a 13, which is a failure. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Uh, and this is, this is the replayability. This is the variability of every time you can play the same adventure over and over again, but you'll have certain things will happen to you that might change up the start. <laughs> All right, failure. You are not fast enough and one of the goblins escapes. For each hero that fails the body control roll, pick one, coward goblin from the pile of henchmen cards and place it nearby. He will take part in the next combat as an additional opponent. Okay. Uh, where are they? Where are they? Uh, I have to find the other henchmen now. I think they're here. I don't think they're in the default deck that I made from yesterday. Because yesterday I succeeded on this. So this is already different than my previous play. What's he called? A Coward Goblin I'm looking for. So there's all different like uh, sets of enemies, uh, henchmen, that you'll pull from based on the adventure you're playing. So there's a whole bunch here that I'm not even playing with, which is interesting. I got like undead guys in here, skeletons and humanoid guys. Standard fantasy stuff. Ah, Cowardly Goblin. You're already a typo. It's looking for Coward Goblin. I found Cowardly Goblin. I hope that's the same. Because that's not... Yeah, it must be that. Because uh, it's not what it says in the book. But anyways, we got a Cowardly Goblin. Okay, now we can talk about enemy cards here. Uh, so the threat level of this guy is a 1. So he's a pretty weakling enemy. Uh, 5 health. His dodge value is 0. His defensive armor whatever value is 0. So he blocks no damage. He has no chance of dodging anything I attack him with. And he gets one action, so basically one d20 roll, to decide what he plays based on results. It's a very like, basic, straightforward AI. When it's the enemy's turn, you literally roll a d20 based on what the value is. You follow the instructions. This is no sword and sorcery here. This is like straight up simple stuff, which is a nice change of pace sometimes. Uh, so that's how this guy works. And it says I am placing it nearby. Okay, so he's nearby. Is this nearby or is this nearby? I don't know. This is nearby, I guess. Uh, okay. You venture into the depths of the dungeon. The tumult must have started the other den uh, startled sorry, the other denizens because you don't meet a soul. You discover abandoned quarters and a row of jail cells, which turn out to be empty apart from the crumbling skeleton of an unfortunate ex-inmate. One hero has to make a perception roll. Decide as a group who of you will make the roll. I guess I'll do it. I guess I'll do it. All right. Uh, so my perception stat is 12. I need to roll 12 or less. 11. We did it. All right. So it wasn't a critical, obviously. You have to roll one for that. Uh, it was just a success here. So we find a secret tunnel. This will provide you with an advantage over your enemies. In the following combat, each hero may draw one additional card to her hand. As a reminder, each of you now draws an action card and puts it face down in front of you. Okay. <laughs> Me, myself, and Dice says, Gondor is more nearby than Rohan. Is it? Oh, crap. Okay. So nearby. We'll put it near Gondor then. Okay. So I'm using the Lord of the Rings adventure. Uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Fantasy Flight Games play mat underneath here. I figured it was a better backdrop than just like a generic card game mat. But yes, you can play the whole solo game on just a like, you know, competitive card game play mat. Uh, it'll fit on that. I just didn't have any cool ones I wanted to use. So I figured this looks better. <laughs> uh, you look everywhere, but cannot find any trace of Sylvana or her captors. The only thing that catches your eye is a big mural on one of the walls. Behind it, you can make out faint noises as if there were a secret room behind it where the villains are hiding. One of you should take a closer look. Yeah, this is like a... Look at this. No, this guy looks like Schmeagol. You guys are saying the Cowardly Goblin... Cowardly Goblin looks like Schmeagol. I don't know. He's now beat out by whatever this guy is. <laughs> Precious. 
All right, so one of the heroes has to make a knowledge roll, decide as a group who of you will make the roll. So obviously when you're playing co-op, you'll have more players, you get to make some more strategic choices. I'm only playing with one hero, so the choice is like, it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's always me, I'm always rolling for this hero, but I could be playing with two, uh, and then you can make some more choices, which is neat. So I got a six, and that is a success. So after searching for a while, you find a mechanism with which to open the secret door. Without wasting any more time, you open the door and storm towards your unsuspecting foes. So nothing there bad, I guess. All of a sudden, you stand in front of a motley band of pirates, orcs, and, poss and possible the one or two goblins. Yeah, the translation on this is not the greatest. Uh, I've found a few typos and weird things. My reading is not always the greatest, but there, sometimes I struggle in this game with typos and bad translation, but... They have a second edition again. I'm playing with first edition. I assume they fixed a lot of this in second edition. Uh, I don't know. Without hesitation, they attack you. In the enemy's ranks, you can spot the kobold who points towards you with a mocking laughter and makes your life difficult with his vicious magic spells. You don't know why he acts in this vile way. All you know is that he is protected by powerful kobold magic that blocks all but your most powerful attacks, as long as you haven't found out his name. In order to do so, you can either try to rely on your knowledge about magical creatures and take some wild guesses, you could challenge the kobold to a singing contest, or try to butter him up with some charming words and make him spill his name. Ooh, I can flirt with him. Of course, in the meantime, the other villains won't leave you in peace. So now I follow the instructions for setting up a combat. So each act will have one combat. Again, this is a single act adventure. So here's the combat rules we're gonna set up. Over here is the what happens if you win or lose, okay? So it says, assemble all saving Sylvana cards. A combat starts, read the section combat of the adventure rules. Uh, we won't read that stuff here, but it basically means, you know, if this is your first one you're playing, it's like, okay, now I want you to go back here in the adventure and, you know, follow, follow all the rules here for combat and how to set it up. So we're going to choose our difficulty now. Uh, and yeah, we'll do that now. So we have some difficulty here. Now for the sake, I, I think normal is the right way to go based on the easy play I did yesterday. I still struggled a little bit difficulty wise, but again, I never looked at any of the cards in the deck. I literally just played with what I, what I drew and just tried to make it work. Uh, so we're gonna play on easy today. This is recommended on your first play, uh, just because so you guys can see as much of this play as we can. Uh, I, want, I wanna make it far. So all that does is just increases one extra round uh, to the game, I think. Yeah. So if you play on normal, you get seven time counters on this card. And then when there's five, three, or one counters left, you would draw a henchman card and add it to the line of enemies, okay? Just like every other living cooperative card game, you kind of just pull in enemies that way. Um, and then uh, at zero counters left, you basically keep getting punished over and over again. Uh, in the next turn, the kobold has twice as many actions as usual. So kind of the leader enemy is going to get to go over and over again. But if we can defeat him before that happens, uh, that won't hurt us too much. But we can play as long as we want, which is kind of cool. At least this easy mode and normal mode don't kind of stop you. Um, but with the easy mode, we have like one extra round before guys start coming out and before uh, we reach the zero where the cold bowl starts going crazy. So we'll just play on easy. Uh, and that means we'll throw this over here, uh, and we need some time tokens. We need eight time tokens. And uh, one more. Okay. So let's put them so you guys can see them. Okay, so we have eight time tokens. Once we get down to five, we have another henchman coming to play, okay? Keep that in mind. I may forget. And we're probably getting an extra henchman right now. Okay, uh, another thing we need to do. Oh, all henchmen uh, with the keyword orc and the keyword uh, pirate. So anyone with the pirate. So I only pulled from the core set, guys. So if you already own all like the expansions and Kickstarter promos, you might have more in here. Uh, we will have more in future playthroughs. 
But uh, today I'm just, today, this week, I'm trying to focus on only core set stuff. So anyone interested at, at buying just the core set of the game, which can be found at retail, you're kind of seeing what that stuff is here. And today shouldn't be too bad. I'm only playing the tutorial stuff. But tomorrow we'll get into spoiler stuff where we, we go into the full adventure. <laughs> get out of here, Bob. Uh... His name is Rumble Stiltskin. <laughs> and Dorius, yeah, we went over already what the game is. It's an adventure card game similar to Pathfinder Adventure Card Game or Warhammer. The Warhammer, is it Conquest? I forget what the adventure card game for Warhammer was called. Was it just literally called Warhammer Adventure Card Game? Or it's like Heroes of Tirnoff, like that kind of adventure card game. It's based on the world from the Dark Eye RPG. Uh, and it's kind of like that staple. You have an RPG and you make an adventure card game. That's just like business 101. Warhammer Quest Adventure Card Game is what it was called. Thank you, thank you, Justin. Um, you'll get your coat, yeah, yeah. So Bob is kind of new to the channel, uh, but he should know, and I know he's joking, I see the winky face and everything, um, but he's making a comment that I, I got this game as a gift from, from one of our, our Patreons and, and viewers of the channel, uh, Jim Benny. Uh, and, and he's making comments that this is a free game that I was given as a gift, but I'm still describing it as a generic adventure card game. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest, and, and this, I do the same thing if a company sends me like, you know, a $200 worth of their game and, and expansions and stuff. I treat it the same way. I, I'm not going to BS it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I will point out the things that are dumb. I'll point out the stupid things involved with the game. I'll point out all the great things too. And you'll generally see an honest playthrough where I will not hold back, okay? And you can see if I'm having fun and I'm making multiple streams and I keep playing the game over and over again, you'll know it's a decent game and I like it. Um, but I'll tell you, so. Doris, this, this is the uh, second time I've played. I've played this tutorial. Uh, we're playing the tutorial single act adventure, which is meant to like help you learn the game. We're playing that today. Tomorrow, we're gonna get into the uh, a three act uh, adventure which has like three combats, three whole stages to the story. I don't know how long that's going to take. I've not played that. You'll see me play through that blind tomorrow. Um, and But that's spoilery. So today is like for people to kind of see how the game works. And then tomorrow tune in. No, no worries. I, I don't mind filling people in who tune in late. That's what happens sometimes doing it live. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Too many people dropping that M word in the chat. I'm going to have to start banning people. I need to block that word, actually. I think I can add swear words to my YouTube thing in the chat to be blocked. And people keep using the M word over and over again. But I guess YouTube doesn't consider it a swear word, but I do. Uh, that word, uh, you know, cover your ears, everybody. Monopoly. Yeah, yeah, we got we to not use that term around here, okay? We, we, don't, we don't like to mention that word. <laughs> So many people associate that word with modern board gaming, and, and I, we need to stop that. <laughs> All right, uh, so th this is our henchman. We built our henchman deck. I'll shuffle our henchman deck, okay? <laughs> yes. All right, <clears throat> so that's our henchman. All right, shuffled up, ready to go. What else we got to do? What else we gotta do? Let's let's make sure we don't miss anything here. Again, we've only played one, so feel free to chime in if you're like, wait, you forgot this. Uh, so, let's see here. Uh, our threat value. Okay, uh, let me just check. I, I know about like what we gotta get set up there, but let's see if we have anything combat-wise. No, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Let's get back to the adventure, actually. Again. Dear Ulysses Spiel, put the whole PDF of your rules online. I'd appreciate it. So I don't have to fumble with this giant newspaper sized book. That'd be great. All right. Uh, the book is nice, though. The quality is nice. I'll give it that. All right. So next is a threat value. So how we're going to find out how many henchmen are involved. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what that happens with this guy, actually. Number of heroes. So our threat value. Uh, which is basically how many enemies we're going to start with is heroes times five. So I'm one hero, 
five is the threat value. Uh, if some of the heroes fail the previous body control roll, the henchman cards cowardly coward goblin that were put aside now come into play. Mm. I would assume this guy's in play first. Or should I be flipping first? It kind of matters, but I'm going to just do it this way. So I have a threat value of five I need to set up. I have one already, okay? I keep drawing henchmen from left to right until we've filled it all up. I'll put this guy here, actually. Uh, the next guy is a four. So we've now reached our five threat. We didn't go over it. But even if this guy was a ten or a seven or something, we would still he would still come into play and we just stop there because we've, we've hit our threat value set up. So yeah, you could go over the five and have a little bit of harder guys to deal with. Um, Hmm. Better. Still kind of bright. I don't know. Some light is hitting off that card. Anyways, all right. So, uh, vinyl rabbit. I don't know where I've seen threat happen like that. You can tell me. I, I don't know if you're joking around, but I found that was kind of weird. Is that from Lord of the Rings? been a while. I know there's a threat track in Lord of the Rings, but I, I don't know if that's related to enemy setup. I can't remember, but it does seem familiar, but kind of neat. Oh, is it from Marvel? <laughs> Man, all these games are like blending together to me now. I, I'm learning Arkham Horror LCG on the side too, and I'm getting confused. I start reading this game now too, and I'm like, man, all these, all these card games, there's some similarities between all of them. And uh, I'm getting confused. Like, which ones do you start with this many cards? Which ones reshuffle which decks? Which ones don't reshuffle decks? Which ones you get punished when your deck runs out? Which decks do you not get punished when they run out? Uh, yeah, they all have this. <laughs> they, all, they all have their own little twists. Okay, uh, what else we need to do? Our hero actions. So sometimes you have what are called hero actions, uh, which come into play as part of an adventure. Okay, so we're playing Saving Sylvana. This is our only hero action. It's called Guess the Name. Every hero, once per turn, we can spend one endurance. That's what this little symbol is, endurance. So that's tapping, tapping an endurance card or exhausting an endurance card, okay? Uh, I could either choose to do a craft roll where I literally test against craft or knowledge where I take a guess or persuade where I flirt. So I can sing, take a guess, or flirt. It's basically you're just choosing which one you want to do based on your hero. Um, based on my stats... I assume I flirt because my Persuade is a 10. Because my Craft is 8 and my Knowledge is 8. So I want to roll less than, so obviously I want to pick the higher value one. So I'm going to try to flirt with this, this Kobold. Uh, this guy right here, this Kobold. Guy looks like a, a little hench guy there. Um, we don't know his name. He's question mark the Kobold. He's a supernatural leader. His health is going to be 3 times the amount of heroes in the game. So he's only got three health, but he cannot lose health until we complete the guess the name little exercise here. So as one of our actions, we can spend endurance only once per turn to try to guess the name. And we're going to place heroes times three adventure counters, oh that's what those are called, on this card. For every successful roll, you remove one counter. When all counters are removed, the heroes learn the kobold's name and can attack him like a normal opponent. Okay. So three adventure counters. And that's these little generic things here. This is an adventure counter. Kind of used for all different things. Okay, so we'll put three of them on them. Okay, so we can't attack the guy until we get these off here. So it's like a little side thing you got to deal with, as you see in all these card games. Like, you got you to fight the enemies, but you also got to deal with some side mission going on. Uh, yeah, it could be Corey. I don't know. I don't want to spoil what his name was when I found it out last time. It could be Bob. It could be Bob, yeah. Uh, and then he has a dodge value, so that just means he'll roll a d20. If he rolls 8 or less, he could dodge half the damage coming at him. He doesn't block any damage with the shield, and he does the uh, actions per turn based on how many heroes you're playing with. So if we're playing 3 heroes, he's going to do 3 d20 rolls, and it will determine which actions he does here on the card. Super straightforward. Okay, so we're going to put him here. He's our leader. Uh, we can put him like this, maybe. And then we put the henchman to the left. 
and they come out based on the order they were drawn. Those sleeves off there. All right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, and when they activate, sorry, when we go to the enemy turn, we activate the leader first, then each henchman left to right. Okay. Uh, in this card, we have extra. Uh, we got it from the original story. And let's see here. Uh, defeat. So here's the defeat and victory conditions. They're different every time you play, depending on which adventure you're doing. Every time a hero is disabled, you receive a doom counter. When you have the number of doom counters equal to the number of heroes, you lose the combat. Because we're playing solo, as soon as we die once, we're done. But if we were playing like two heroes, if one of them died, you're not finished yet. The other hero can keep going. Uh, we're victorious when we defeat or put to flight all opponents. So if all opponents have run away or we've defeated them, as long as we've cleared the board, we win. And again, we can't hit the kobold. We can't hit this guy until we've dealt with this little side mission here. And you get reward cards equal to the number of heroes is our reward. Okay, and then none of this stuff, we won't read any of this stuff till we're actually done. And I'll just throw that off to the side. All right, now we're gonna draw some cards. So we're gonna get five cards to start, but we got a bonus one because, you know, we rolled so awesome at the beginning. So we get six cards, okay. Oh yeah, the Cowardly Goblin's here already. I added him. I added him right here. Or should he be after the threat draw? That's why I'm not sure uh, of Volkira. Should I, should I have drawn all my threat guys first, then added him? Or is he part of that? Because the way it says it, it just says... After the threat draw? Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. After? Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we need one more henchman. All right. So we have nine points worth of henchmen plus one. So we actually have ten points out of five threat. So we're actually, uh, we got a little, a little trouble here. That's pretty crazy, actually. I've never seen this guy before. So this guy's 20 health, three armor. Yeah, that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So 15 health. So let's give them some health. Put these little tokens here. I'll put them here. You have five ones and twenties. Uh, we could just do this. <laughs> Huge. Uh, all right, and then a five. All right, that's their health right now. Okay, this guy's three, but again, we can't do anything about that yet. And we want to get rid of this guy. I know from playing yesterday. This guy does stupid things uh, where he, he throws your endurance back. The hero with the most cards discards one. Uh, also, the hero with the most fate uh, takes a weapon back to hand if you have any fate or you take damage. Uh, or he heals his fellow warriors if he rolls a 10 to 12, which seemed to happen a lot to me yesterday. So even while I was damaging the other guys, this guy keeps healing them. Uh, he could for a 13 to 20 do nothing in evil laugh, but I don't think he ever did that to me in my game. Uh, he's super annoying. So we really want to get rid of this, but we can only once per round even attempt this. And I literally missed yesterday my first three attempts on it. Um, yeah, so. Uh, fate counters, we have two per hero in the game. So I've set these up here. They're just kind of like in the middle pool. But we could get them when we fail an attack. Uh, what else? How else can we get them? Failing an attack. As long as you haven't re-rolled it. Uh, when defeating a leader or a henchman. So if we defeat any of these guys, we get a fate token. And we can only have max two. So you can't hoard more than two and then spend them. Uh, by certain hero card abilities, pray to the gods during a brief respite. That's later. Uh, in adventure when resolving game. No, no. So yeah, we really want to just defeat enemies or if we miss attack rolls. We could get these and they help us reroll, draw cards, or get extra endurance. Okay. Let's check out our cards. I think we're good to go. I think we did everything for setup. Right, right. Yeah, I think so. Yep, now we just go to the, we do the rounds. We just loop and loop and loop uh, through the phases. Uh, so again, I have this nice little reference. It's better than the one in the book. Uh, so we do the heroes, start the adventure. You resolve, start a turn effects. Then you draw two cards. Then you ready any exhausted cards. Then you put two cards face down as endurance cards, up to two. 
You can put zero if you want, or one. You play action cards, paying endurance. You can do free actions whenever you want. You can do as many actions as you can afford in step five there. Step six, uh, oh, I guess step five and six are kind of played together in like their own phase. You can play cards, attack in any order you want, do as many times as you can afford, okay? Uh, then you take some fade if you defeat an enemy, you resolve at the end of turn, and you discard down to seven cards. You can have more than seven cards during your turn, but at the end you have to discard down to seven. Then we do the enemies, they attack from left to right, or resolve, I guess, from left to right. Then we remove a time counter, we deal with that card uh, with how many time counters we have left. And then it just reminds you of fate points, what you do with them on here, okay? That's just kind of, yeah, there's no mythos phase in this game. <laughs> no mythos phase. All right, thank you. Thank, thank Cthulhu, there is no mythos phase. All right, so let's play. Uh, now we have six cards, we got a bonus one. I, I don't think it's equivalent of getting an extra enemy. I, I feel like we didn't level out there, but uh, I can mulligan. I can mulligan. Out of these cards, uh, I'm allowed to toss away whatever I want. I draw replacements, then I shuffle those tossed away cards back into the deck. So, I saw I had a card draw one here. I'm keeping this one. This one, like, is gotta happen. Like, I think, right? Like, card draw is good. But I feel like I want that. Now I just need, like, economy. Uh, a heal right now, since I have, like, lost no damage. Healing six. Maybe it's good later. I don't think right now. So I'd probably put that one away and mulligan it. Although, if I think, like, ah, I don't ever care about this, I might save it and use it as an endurance card for the rest of the game. And, and use it as economy, right? Um, but I, I really don't care about it. Uh, adding an extra hit point to a weapon. I don't have any weapons in play yet. And out of the weapon I have in hand here, it costs three. And again, I can only get up to two economy in play at the first turn, so I might be holding that for a while. Um, oh, I should talk about how this works, how attacking works, okay? Every character has like a melee, a range, and a magic stat, okay? So that's what I'm trying to roll less than when I do those attacks. If I succeed, then I get to follow the attack instructions. And here's my dodge value, okay? So I always have basic equipment. Every hero has this. I have a throwing knife. I can spend one endurance. That is, you know, exhausting an endurance card. Then I have to exhaust this card to show that it's used once per turn kind of thing. Then I get to roll a d6, and that's the damage I deal to the opponent. Obviously, I would have to take away any armor, and if they had a dodge value, they might dodge half of that damage if they successfully roll a dodge test or whatever, okay? So, for example, this spear thrower, I could get this into play as an asset. If they have a black art here, they go into play as, like, permanent cards I could then use. So I could exhaust an endurance, exhaust this card to do a range attack, Rolling a d6 plus three damage, so whatever my d6 is. But again, doing a range attack, I have to test first with a d20. I have to test that I'm gonna get under my equal to or less than my range value of 12. So if I roll the, oh, I got a critical, for example. Okay, I get to draw a free card for a critical. If I got a, a critical failure, I would actually lose a card at random from hand. Um, but I can re-roll a fate tokens before that happens, if I have any. Uh, but this would let me draw a card, which is kind of cool. But anyways, that was just an example. I wish I rolled that. I've never ever rolled that before on a die. Uh, <laughs> I also have a special ability, uh, which once during the game, I can change my ranged die roll result to a three. So if I need to get a specific range attack off, and like all everything matters on it, I've, I've spent all these cards to buff it up, I can use it once per turn. Then I flip my card over, and it shows my ability is already used, and, and it's done, okay? So that's my basic hero stuff. But we we're saying this one I could attack with a d6 plus 3 damage. And the key is there's a limit. You can only attack once per uh, a combat type. So in a turn, I can only do one melee attack, one range attack, one magic attack. That's it. Uh, it even if I had my base weapon plus this weapon in play, I can't attack with both of these in the same turn. Uh, you're not allowed. I don't know if there's a way to break that, but that's the basic rules. They tell me I'm not allowed. So, this is a nice, better range weapon. I think there's a better one in my deck. I think I saw a bow yesterday, uh, if I remember correctly. So this is not even like the best range weapon, but could be helpful. Again, I can, I can mulligan and get rid of it. 
I also have this I can attach to a weapon to add an extra point. So, you know, just like every other card game that exists to man, they have the whole like, okay, let me let me attach this on here and I would increase this damage to a four on top of the D6. So you can do stuff like that. So yes, I have some things that work well together here, but I also have a card here that lets me for two, I could play this card. This is uh, the red bordered cards are like one time effects and it's a free action so I can play it any time, even on the enemy's turns. But obviously this one says, play this card after a hero's damage roll. So I could play this, if we we're playing two heroes or co-op, I could play this card on your turn. You know, when you're going and I could play this to help your range attack add four hits. So again, this is why I may want a range attack to succeed because I may want to play one of these to add to the hits. So this one's not a bad card, but again, I don't have much economy at the start. But I do like the, the ability on that. This one I'll probably keep though. This is a leather helmet. So you can get these permanent effects in play that are armor and on an attack basically once per turn because I have to exhaust this, I can prevent one damage. And if I want, I could discard this to reduce a Dentax damage by an additional three points. So if I'm in a desperate spot and you have head, head armor, body armor, leg armor, something else, I, I don't remember them all, um, but you're only allowed one of each type in play. So if you're deck building and you want to put two helmets in your deck, you're only going to ever have one of them in play. But it's kind of cool. You can discard one to help you defensively and then play another one after. I don't know what, how many are in my deck or anything, but I did see this one yesterday. So I might keep this. That seems pretty helpful because I think I'm going to be getting hit right off the bat. So this might help mitigate some of that. But I don't know. I don't think I'd be able to play this first turn though. So, you know, I, I might just toss some of that stuff. And I need to dig. I don't know if I have the card. I'm actually going to look. Um, there's a card. Yeah, see, I have a bow. I have a bow that I think is like a better. It's, I want to get this one into play. Obviously, it's five. It's going to take forever to build up for it. Um, but I do have multiple well aimed shots. And the cool part is they have these like upgrade cards that can add to your stats. So they like attach. They attach onto your hero and kind of buff up their stats. Uh, so you can get those into play. So I didn't see any of those, which would be nice. Yeah, I even have zero cost cards in here, it looks like. We can do a magic attack of a D6. So I have like a little bit of everything, I think. A long sword I can use for melee attacks. D6 plus four. Oh, I do have armor, body armor. But again, that costs four. That's going to take a while to build up to that, right? Um, I don't know like what I would really want early with this. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just that card draw card. I don't, I don't know. Anyways. Hey, Tara. Yes, Pickle, this is one of our our Christmas gifts to the channel. <laughs> and shout out to Sam, too. You guys know Sam the man. Uh, I, I don't think he's here today, but he uh, he sent me uh, the Spirit Island expansion I just got recently. I do appreciate that. Wrapped in everything. I was, like, very blown away by that, but it was super sweet. Yeah, I hate saying the word tap. Tap is annoying. Uh, it's related to magic. They used to have like a copyright on that, like uh, that mechanism or something, uh, but that's no longer. You can use tap in a game supposedly that they like, they try to put some legalese around that and, so they could sue people not to use that word for some reason, um, but that doesn't exist anymore. But everyone just uses the term exhaust. Uh, this game uses exhaust, but I may say tap too because that just, you know, it's like a magic thing. Feels like it in this game. Uh, so I'm just going to toss all this. I, I don't know. I'm just going to toss all this. See what we get. Actually, no, we're keeping the armor. We're keeping armor, right? So let's toss these four. Let's draw four replacements. One, two, three, four. And these will get shuffled back in. Use muffler instead of exhaust. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> or tip it. Tip. Tip or tip it. Rotate. <laughs> I 
No, no vinyl. They don't own that term anymore. That expired, supposedly. If you Google that, there's actually info on it. And it's like, it was more like a rumor going around. It's like they, they, they tried to patent the, the whole idea of like turning a card and, and the tap being involved or something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the full history on it, but whatever it was has expired. Like whatever pending patent they put in to try to do that, it, it's no longer in, in existence. But the, that whole idea has gotten around the board game industry so much that I see people on Kickstarters commenting, telling companies not to use that word. Like, like backers of, of Kickstarter saying that, that, you know, leave that word out of your rule books and stuff. So it's like just the idea that that, that, that like, you know, story exists. Uh, people are afraid to use it, which is funny. Oh, just the iconography is still covered. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's some weird thing behind that. You, you go look it up. It's like very weird. But like everyone just spread the whole idea that like you use tap and you'll be sued by Wizards of the Coast. Now Hasbro, right? But it's like I don't think they're doing that. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Uh, all right. So what do we get? Uh, we got reroll heroes failed attack. Subtract three from the new one. That's not a bad it's cheap cost card. I like that. Self-control. Add two to your heroes. Oh, it's one of those ones that can buff up our uh, our attack, which is nice. We need a weapon to do um, melee attacks. Blinding Flash, raise an opponent. So this is a card that in the dual game has different rules than it does in the adventure. So we ignore these rules on the card and we use this one. So we raise an opponent's action die roll by three, which will kind of help them fail. Um, and then this one's a heavy fall. Play this card after an opponent succeeds with a, um, uh, what is this called? I said a dodge, a dodge roll. Um, that opponent loses three health. So you kind of like trip them up. And that's it. Okay, those are our cards to start. So some of these are going to become economy. I'm going to play them face down and not worry about them. Which is probably this blinding flash. I, I don't care. I mean, I should care, but I'm, I'm not going to. And then I think... I think this heavy fall. I'll probably play these two as like face down. Alright. Um... So yeah, after drawing, we ready up all of our cards. Then we play two cards, up to two cards down as endurance cards. So these are what we're going to use to pay for stuff. Okay. Uh, oh no, we draw two cards still. We draw two cards, sorry. We still draw two cards. That was just Mulligan. We draw two cards. Uh, so I also have these to add to the choices in the game. So I got the dodge roll can be increased. And a dirk. Oh, here we go. We got a melee attack. Actually, I'm going to change up. Um, no, maybe not. Eh, maybe not. No, I'm still going to play those two as endurance. Okay, those are endurance cards. Uh, then what? Then what do we got to do? We have to ready cards, put up to two cards face down, uh, and then play action cards so we do our turn. So uh, I am going to definitely attempt this uh, this little side quest thing here. And we're going to try to flirt. We're going to try to flirt with the kobold to find out his name. And I got an 8. Which is a 10 for persuade. So I succeeded. So I remove one of those tokens. Okay. Sweet. Already off to a good start. I think. Alright. And then for the other card. Uh, or other th thing I'm going to play is just an asset. Hmm. Or I could attack. Maybe I attack. Yeah, let's attack. Let's show what attack works like. So I'm going to do this attack with my throwing knife. Nothing crazy. I'm going to try. Uh, so I paid one endurance. So I paid my second endurance. I'm going to rotate this card also exhaust it. Uh, I then do a range attack. I'm rolling a d20 to see if I succeed to even do the attack. Um, which I have a 12. I have to roll 12 or less. And we got exactly a 12. Okay. Uh, so we succeed. So now I get to roll uh, 1d6 worth of damage. Okay, uh, I should have chose my target actually. I guess I can do it now. It doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to try to take out this cowardly goblin. We're going to try to kill him quickly, hopefully, and get a, get a fate token to help us with rerolls. Uh, so let's see. We need a 5 or higher to wipe him out. He has no armor at least and no dodge. So he won't block or, or prevent anything. Uh, unfortunately, we just hit him for 2. Boop, boop. 
And I have no I have no economy to play anything to help me like buff that or anything like that. So that's unfortunately all we're doing. That's all I have. I have no free cards. No crazy stuff there. Uh, so that's that. On to the enemy turn. So we're going to go to this guy on the left. And we're going to roll a d20 and see what he does for the kobold. Uh, we got a 12. Aw. <laughs> so a 12 says healing spell. He heals all of his fellow warriors for 5. So that means all these guys are going to get healed up. So this guy literally goes right back to full health. That's fun. Uh, next is the Orc Archer. He rolls a 7. What's a 7 do? He does a range attack. Starting hero suffers uh, 1d6 plus 2 damage. Okay. So I need to roll a d6 plus 2 damage. It's obviously attacking me. I am the only hero. But if we're playing multiple heroes, uh, you actually draw from some tokens or the starting hero keeps changing so the the enemies will choose who they attack obviously in solo one hero we're like it's straightforward like who they're attacking so this guy's gonna hit me for two plus two is four two plus two is four uh i roll, do a dodge roll though so i roll this d20 uh and i need six or less and i could prevent half of it and we got a 13 games rolling away uh, so we don't dodge any of it, so we take 4 damage, so I drop down to 36 on our dial here. Okay, I'll put it carefully down. Uh, okay, so the Orc Warrior uh, is going to see what he does. An 8. So the lower they roll, the better. Like, rolling low is great in this game. So obviously they're going to do crazier attacks and stuff. And as you see, on a higher roll, they might do nothing, which is kind of cool. Uh, so what I say? He got an 8. So a hero chosen by the group suffers 1d6 plus 3. Hmm, I think I'll choose my hero. Uh, 1d6 plus 3. And a 5 plus 3 is 8 damage. Let me try to dodge some of that. Uh, 13, nope. That's uh, lucky number 13. It says no. So I'm taking what I say, 8. Well, that's not good. And I drop down a 28 damage. Woo! Uh, maybe I want that heal card now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right. Then the Cowardly Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it's going to be a shorter playthrough than even expected. I put on easy mode thinking we'll go, it'll, it'll go to all the way to the end for sure, but I don't know anymore. Uh, this guy rolled a three, so he's going to attack. The starting hero suffers a d6 plus one. And this is where I warn again at the beginning of the, the stream, I said... This game is just full of stat checks and dice rolling. That's pretty much the, the majority of the game so far that I've seen. Uh, so if you're into luck and dice rolling and stat checks, game may not be for you. Three plus, what did I say? Plus one. So it's four more damage. Uh, but let's see if we can cut that in half by dodging. 20 is a critical fail. Uh, do I have to lose a card on hand on one of these? I don't know if you have to do it for a dodge. Uh, but we might actually. Uh, critical, critical success and failure apply to all D20 rolls during the game once past the adventure introduction phase. Yeah. Yeah, I discard one at random. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we'll do a card at random. Uh, what do I have here? Uh, six cards. Perfect. Uh, two. This one. So, oh, we lost our Dirk. That sucks. Okay. Yeah, fun. So, I don't dodge any of that damage. What was it? It was four damage coming at us. So, I go down to 24. That's crazy. Almost lost half my health in the first round of the game. Yeah. I am bad at this game, I know. I know. <laughs> well, there is another melee weapon in there we saw. We mulligan back, right? So hopefully we see that one eventually. To give us a chance to even attack more times in a turn. Uh, okay. Uh, so they're done. Now we're going to remove a time counter. Okay. And we're down to seven. So nothing happens there yet. Not until we're down to five left. And it comes to our turn. 
There's no starter turn effects. We're going to draw two cards from the draw pile. We found some leather armor. We hopefully we'll play later. And a well-aimed shot. Okay. Uh, we ready up any exhausted cards. And we put two. We can put up to two cards face down as endurance now. Hmm. Like, holding on to this to increase our, our dodge value might be helpful. <laughs> Since we're going to be attacked so much. Oh, man. Oh, uh, drawing a card? I don't know. I don't know what to play, but I want to put two cards face down here. This is the problem. I don't, I don't know the game well enough to know, like, what we're waiting for. I just know I want to do more attacks in a round, and we ought to be defensive. I figure we'll just put down another one of these. Reroll a hero's failed attack. Tract three from the result of the new roll. I like that card a lot, which is nice, but I don't know. I just need to get some more permanent stuff into play. Again, I'm a noob. So more armor, yes, I agree. I agree. Maybe we just go the armor route and not worry about dodge rolls, and we just put this down. Because we're not going to be able to play all this stuff. Yeah, let's uh, let's put this face down, uh, and we're not we're not going to we're going to lose a dodge card. That's fine. So now we got our our, our four endurance cards now, four worth of economy here. And now let's just play our turn. So we definitely want to spend one. We want to get this guy out of play because we don't want him to keep healing guys up and stuff. So this guy needs to go. Or this, we need to find out the kobold's name. So this little side quest thing needs to happen. An 18 is not going to do it for us. That, that is a big fail. Okay, I need to have it, uh, needs to be 10 or less. So that sucks. Okay, big waste, big waste. Lots of big wastes in this game. All right, um... Hmm. I want to get this card draw card going. So we're going to play this down as an asset. Okay. So this I can spend another um, another endurance and, and exhaust this to draw a card. But I feel like we're not worried about card draw right now. Maybe, maybe instead we just go for the helmet actually. Hmm. Could also use two of it to try to uh, add four to our attack. Maybe get this guy out of play. If we can succeed. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm really trying to do here. But this is... Uh, maybe I, my mulligan was like way off. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, if I had this weapon still, uh, I'd be trying to play this, and like, and so I could have two attacks in a turn. But because I got discarded out of her hand, I'm kind of like it threw a wrench in my plans big time. Jim wants me to play the helmet, base attack. All right, let's do that then. I'm down with that. Leather helmet put into play, so we can exhaust that to prevent like one damage on their turn. Uh, and we'll do a base attack, which is exhaust this, uh, roll a d20, hopefully 12 or less, 17, we fail, so we get a fate token, okay, we get one fate token, which we can't use on this roll, uh, so we get no attack. Uh, now, that's that. Okay, on to the enemies, uh, this guy's gonna go. Seven. And that says, Heat Weapons. So Seven says, Heat Weapons. The hero with the most fate takes one of her weapons in play back into her hand and loses, or loses, 2d6 worth of health. If you have no weapons, nothing happens. Okay, I have no weapons. This doesn't count. I think it's only talking about weapon cards. 
This is just basic equipment, not a weapon. I'm assuming it has to be weapon cards, which I don't I don't have any. Uh, so get out of here, buddy. All right. Then Orc Archer. 14. The Orc Archer at 14. Nothing. Looks for a new target. Okay, we got lucky there. Let's see what the warrior is going to do. 18. Blight. If all leaders have been defeated, remove this card from combat. Otherwise, nothing happens. Okay, the leader's still here. We need to get rid of this guy so bad. That's why failing on the, the guessing the name is so huge. If we can get this out of here, fight this guy, hit him for three damage, some of these guys will just run away, even like just on their own rolls. So yeah. Oh, was it 18? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Did I read that wrong? Oh, sorry. 18 is nothing. Sorry. Twirl is a two-handed hammer. Sorry, I looked at that and I looked like I thought it was 18. That's 19. My bad. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to cheat there, but it did not work. You guys caught me. All right. Uh, Cowardly Goblin. Let's see what he does. A critical success means this guy will get an extra activation. So he is going to first attack the starting hero. A d6 plus a damage. A 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's try to dodge. A nine, not enough. So I take two. Oh, but I can prevent one of that. So I'll just take one. Okay. Uh, and next he will go again. Because he got a critical. Uh, 12. Which is nothing. Goblin looks for an escape route. All right. Uh, yeah, that was like, oh, that was okay. I mean, that like compared to the first round, that was better. But man, twenty-two health out of forty already. Holy! All right. Uh, let's see here. Where are we? Uh, so we remove one of these time counters, and there's more henchmen coming. Like this is the crazy part. Yeah, vinyl, I did, uh, but I failed. All right. So six counters left. Nothing happens here. And we're going to go around, draw two cards. Ready everything that's exhausted. And we got our four endurance. Uh, we drew. Yeah, these ones. So we got some free cards. These have been nice before, but I mean, hey, we found a treat wounds card. This might be helpful, right? We can do it every turn to kind of heal two. It's going to cost us like one, but it's free to play at least. Oh, wait. In adventure, as above, oh, so you do the heal too. An unconscious hero cannot be brought back into play by this card effect. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, all right. Uh, what do we want to play as endurance? I think we play some. Hmm. Yes, Velko, it was. Yeah, Jim was super cool and actually packed up all the cards that were missing on that stream and sent them over all fully sleeved, all in deck boxes, and I appreciate that again. Thank you, Jim, so much for that. Uh, so yeah, we got <laughs> that's why we didn't play it as soon on the channel. Uh, so we, we're, it was it came in two shipments. So we're good, we're good. <laughs> play the armor? Hey, play the armor as endurance? I need to find out what I'm playing as endurance first. That's the key. I'm thinking of well aimed shot. Um, yeah, that this man Drew, it's, it's the toughest part. Is like what to what to keep, what to play as endurance. I feel like I want to still put endurance cards down because I want to play an armor for four. But uh, yeah, like I have a magic attack here. So this could help me start attacking more than once in a turn. Not the greatest, but. Chris is saying you should always try and play max endurance for the first three or four turns. I agree. I want to do that. But what cards? <laughs> I understand that. I think I, yeah, I think I went up to like six or eight endurance. And, and then I felt kind of comfortable at that when I learned it yesterday. That seems like a good spot to be at, at least with the base decks.
end equals well aim shot recon. The, I do have another uh, uh, well aim shot still in the deck, I think. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't lock one down as an endurance card, so there is still another one coming at least. We saw there's two. Yeah, it's basically mana. It's basically like locations and games. It's it's the economy of the game. The economy of the game. Red card for endurance. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. That's the only red one I have though. Uh, let's throw. Mm. Based on where we're at, I'm like, I want to keep stuff that's defensive right now until we can get our stuff together. But there's also like a time race to the game. I need to get some offensive stuff going, especially so I can kill this guy if possible. Uh... Use armor for endurance? I could, but I should probably play it, right? Because then I, I don't take as much damage. And I want to keep the heal. I'm thinking maybe of using this magic attack, unfortunately. I know I could use it to do extra attacks, but I know there's another magic attack in the deck. And I'd probably rather get that going. So I'm going to use that, I think. Unless I used it already. No, I didn't. Alright. Magic's not my strong suit anyway. Actually, it's better than my melee, but... Alright. So we got the endurance down. Okay, so we're going to slap down some armor for four. Okay, we're going to start that. Then we're going to spend one to try to guess the name. A hey, vinyl, we're guessing the name. A 14, I fail. It like all comes down to that one die roll. It's, oh, can I re-roll it? it? Doesn't say test, right? Can I re-roll that? That's what I don't know. I never know what the rerolls can be used on. I can use Fate Point to draw a card, gain one endurance, reroll the attack from a hero card, reroll skill checks in an adventure, so body control, craft, knowledge, perception, persuade, stealth, survival, and willpower. Which is that, right? Yeah, yeah. I can? Okay, let's do that. Let's use it. Let's use it. Yeah, because it's like super, this is like key to the whole thing, is this stupid test. Oh, we got a nine. I just need a 10 or less. Oh, come on, focus, focus. Oh, you guys believe me. All right, we got a nine. So we take another one away. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. All right, that feels like a good, a good spend of fate. On our last one, we're going to attack again. We're gonna to try to attack here, the Cowardly Goblin. See if we hit, we need 12 or less. Oh, we got a 12. All right. So we're going to do a D6 worth of damage to the Cowardly Goblin. A 1. Uh, that's great. <laughs> Woo! All right. Done. Okay. They're going to go. Let's do this guy. Let's try to speed it up. A 13. Uh, nothing. Evil laughter. Okay. This guy. 7. Uh, the starting hero suffers 1d6 plus 2 damage. So it's 6 coming at me. I'll try to dodge. 6 or less. An 8. I miss. So I take 6 damage. Uh, but I will prevent 3 of that. I can only use 1 piece of armor per attack. I'm going to take 3. Go down to 19. Okay. This guy. A 10. He is going to twirl his hammer. Uh, nothing happens. And the Cowardly Goblin. <laughs> Shh, dragon, don't tell anybody. Uh, 13 is nothing. Well, this guy's... At least this Cowardly Goblin, like, bear... like we've seen him attack so much because he gets, like, lucky with the 1 to 6. But 7 or higher, he does nothing, which is nice. But he's looking for an escape route. He just, just chills. Okay, so... Uh, that was a pretty good turn also. All right. Well, at least for them, not for, or for me on their turn. Uh, we're going to remove a time token. So now we're down to five. So we draw a new henchman card. And just for glare purposes, we're going to take off the card. Or the sleeve. 
Another orc archer. Okay. So it just keeps getting better. All right. So we're going to throw 15 health on this guy. Okay. Um, and draw two cards back around again. Ready up everything. And we're at six endurance. All right, here we go. We got a good melee attack here. Long sword. We got to get this one into play, I think. Even though we may miss a lot on our melee attacks because we literally are only an eight in melee, not the greatest. Uh, which we can buff up. We can like go. We can buff up our melee by two and and maybe have more successes on the melee rolls. But I also got a snare. So of course I'm like a, an elf ranger. So I have traps. Uh, that seems to be a thing. Like it basically can be like Gilly in this game. Uh, a snare. I could play this in a play. Then you discard this card after an opponent rolls for an attack. The opponent loses four health. But in an adventure, we supposedly ignore this. It says you may play this card before an opponent rolls the action die. That opponent loses four health. So it sounds like I can play this from hand on their turn. Which is cool. And like kind of trap them. Surprise get them. Alright. So these are all great cards. But I gotta put something down as endurance I think. Although, although, hmm, hmm. Like, what am I doing this turn? I think I'm going to try to get my attacks going better. Uh, I can do I can do up to three combats a turn, one for each type of combat. I see it asking in the chat there. So I can do a melee, a ranged, or a mag magic. One of each, no more than that. But I only, literally only have this one way of attacking range. And all I have in play is, is two armor. Like, I've got nothing really going. But, because uh, I got my Dirk discarded. My Dirk got discarded. I wanted to play this earlier, but it got knocked out of my hand because I had a critical failure roll. Uh, but now I've drawn into the Longsword, which is a better melee weapon. I've got some endurance to get this into play, so it's four. It's going to cost an extra to use it. Um... Hmm... I think I'm not going to play any endurance this turn. I know it's weird, but uh, I'm going to take this kind of like a, another build up ish turn. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe not. I, I, I've been holding this way too long. Like, I, I didn't even put this into play as much as I thought it would be awesome. I think I'm just going to put it in as endurance. I have stuff to play, I don't need to draw cards. Um. And I'll use that to like heal or attack or something. Or this is going to cost me six, seven to attack. Or maybe. Maybe I don't need to heal. I'll, I can rely on my armor maybe. We know there's another heal card in my deck. Uh, it's not repeatable. Maybe we try that, and we try to go offensive here. And I'll put the snare in there. I'm, I'm going to use the snare as, a, as a endurance, right? Yeah, so now we have eight endurance. Seems a little crazy, but I think we're going to need it. Let's do it. All right, so first things first, we're going to try... You know what? We want to try to earn a fate token um, to use to reroll if we need to on this one. So I'm going to actually choose to attack first. Uh, and I'm actually going to try to build up to make sure the one that will fail the most, actually. I think I can do this, where I, I pay two. We're going to put in some self-control, where I'll buff up my melee value here to 10. Okay. I'll put that under my hero card to show that it's buffed up there. Then I'm going to spend four... We're going to get the sword into play. I'm only still going to do one attack this turn. It's going to be this one. And I'm actually okay if it fails. 
Uh, it's more just to, it's a potential of more damage. It's two, two less points here. It might fail a little bit more, but if it fails, I get one of these tokens that then I can use on the roll for this to try to help succeed on it. This is more important to get done than to kill these guys. I know, I know, but I feel with the armor we have built up, we're kind of like, okay, as long as they don't roll all crazy amounts of attacks. And if we kill one of these guys, we might earn a fate token with that. So I'll probably still attack the Cowardly Goblin. If we succeed and we kill him, great, we get a fate token. If we fail on the roll, we get a fate token. But if we succeed on the roll, but then don't get him enough damage to kill him, we're in trouble. But if I use the sword, it's got a plus four damage. So we should kill him no matter what. Because he doesn't have any armor, he doesn't dodge. That's my theory. This is my theory. I could keep the snare to kill the boss, but again, the boss doesn't know his attack. The boss doesn't know his attack. None of them know his attack. So it's like kind of like a lame card to sit there with an hand. And I have to save two endurance for that. So saving that snare, I may be holding that forever and not even have the money to pay for it. Uh, so if we see another snare, I don't know if there's more in the game, but that's, that's the way I'm rolling. I, I'm holding way too many cards. I, I, I should have dumped some of those earlier instead. I don't know, but... I don't know the game well enough. I don't know my deck well enough. This I'm just making judge, judgment calls off what I know. All right. So let's try that attack. Uh, so we're going to roll. We need a 10 or less to try to attack with melee. We're going to try to attack this Cowardly Goblin. We fail. So we're going to take one of these tokens. So we don't, we don't even get to attack him. Uh, oh, I should have spent... Sorry, I should have spent Endurance to do it. And exhausted the card. Okay, so big, big fluff, but we got this. So now I'm going to spend my last one to try to guess his name. Uh, 15. So that's a fail. I'm going to spend this to try to get 10 or less. Let's go. 17. So I fail again. That's all a big ball on my face turn. All right. Fun, fun, fun. All right, we're going to go with this guy, the Cobalt. He rolls a 7. Uh... So he's going to return this weapon to my hand. Or I lose 2d6 worth of health. I'll just take the weapon back to hand. Hopefully I don't lose that. All right. Uh, this guy, Orc Archer, uh, rolls a 14, does nothing, looks for a new target. Uh, the Warrior rolls a 4. So he's going to attack me for a d6 plus 3. Five, eight total. I'm gonna to try to dodge it six or less. Eleven, no. So eight damage. I'm gonna block three of it. So I take five down to fourteen. Uh, now the cowardly goblin. Uh, the cowardly goblin gets a critical. So he draws a one. So he's gonna to get to go again. So he's gonna attack me with a d6 plus one damage. So it's two. It's three actually. Uh, uh, I'm gonna to try to dodge. I don't dodge. I'll block one of it. So I take two damage down to 12. Wow. Uh, he gets to go again because he rolled that critical. Uh, 19. Remove this card from the game. Do not show. Oh, wow. I didn't realize. So flight. Remove this card from the game. Do not shuffle it back into the henchman draw pile. So I, I can't even get this guy to fight. He's just gone. <laughs> so weird. All right, so weird. Okay, he's removed from game. <laughs> and he's not defeated, so I don't even get a fate token for this guy. Man, I... welcome to the live stream of how not to play this game, I guess. I, I don't know. Or is just my luck against me? I don't know. I'm making probably bad decisions. Uh, now we get this guy, the Orc Archer. Three. Oh, that's probably something great for him. Uh, the hero with the most damage suffers... A D6 plus 5. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. A D6 plus 5. So 6. I'm going to try to dodge. I need 6 or less. A 2. Okay. I dodge half of that. So I only take 3 damage. We're down to 9. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to win this one. Alright. That's them done. Our turn. 1, 2... I roll well for the enemies. Oh, okay, that's good. I don't roll well for me, though. <laughs> so I drew two. I got jump to safety. Subtract five from the result of your dodge test. 
Well, that would have been nice before. Oh, and we got another range attack weapon here. A D6 plus 3. So this is better than my normal weapon, but it has a cost to it, obviously. So we're getting our weapons, finally. Let's ready up. Man, it sucks that I had to pay for that sword, and it just went... It didn't do anything and just went back to hand. Like, such a waste. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Um... I, I want this to just go away and then I can fight this guy. That would, that would change things. So, uh, what do I do? What do I do? Can I do two attacks this turn? I think I can, right? If I melee. Okay, we're going to keep looking for the bow. I, I'm not going to take this range one. One. Track five from the result of a dodge test. Hmm. No, don't care. All right, done. So we got our endurance. We're going to spend four of it. We're going to put our sword back into play. Uh, we're going to spend another one of it. We're going to put this draw card into play. We're going to draw a card. Well-aimed shot. Okay. Great. So I have a card in hand. Um... Let's attack with the melee. Uh, no, let's attack with the range. No. Let's just try on this. Let's just roll. Let's just use that endurance to try to get rid of this. Then, then we'll try two attacks on the leader, I think. Oh, did I forget the time token? Sorry. Four left, nobody comes out. Okay, thank you. A five! We did it! We got rid of the stupid thing. Alright, we're good. So now we know this guy's name. So we're now allowed to attack this guy. He can lose health now. That's good, because we're going to just try to attack him right now. So let's try... Let's see if we get lucky on our um, basic attack. Uh, we're looking for a 12 or less. We got a 2. So we can attack. We're doing just a d6. We got a 2. But what I'm going to do... Mm, I'm going to do this, actually. So we're doing 2 damage. Um, but this guy has a dodge value of 8. So here's the problem. He, he could roll, and if he gets an 8 or less, he dodges half of it. So what I'm actually going to do is spend 2... Oh, should I? Yeah, let's do it. Who cares? We're not going to do this. That's fine. I'll spend two. We're going to do a well-aimed shot. So we're adding four to the damage. So it's going to be six. So even if he dodges it, he's going to die. Uh, let's see. A three. You didn't need to play two endurance cards to keep the cards. No. I'm, I'm playing the way I play. I know, Chris, I'm probably not playing as... Good as you should be after playing it a bunch. But again, I've only played this game once. So I'm kind of glad I'm playing on stream today. That's why, why I want to do today's stream. I was only going to play tomorrow's stream and, and play with the normal campaign. But I actually decided last minute, like this morning, uh, first thing I was reading the rules, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stream this today, my second play ever, because I want your guys' feedback. I know some of you have played this game a bunch. It's been out for a while. And I knew you guys would, would be helpful and get us kind of a good start for when we jump into the, the campaign tomorrow for the first time, um, playing the like the three act campaign, uh, we'll get some feedback. So people who watch this later, like I said, leave comments down below. And those in the live chat, I appreciate you guys throwing tips at me and stuff. Um, Cause it'll help, it'll help for tomorrow. Um, so yeah. Uh, so what was I doing? Oh, he did dodge, of course. So he did dodge. So he reduces that damage down to three, but that is enough. Either way, see, I knew he was going to do it. I knew he was going to dodge. Uh, so yeah, he is dead. I, I don't know how to... Sure, I'm going to put him upside down. He's done. Or I guess he's out of play. I don't know. I don't know where he goes, but we, we defeated him. Okay, that feels good. I have no cards in hand. I did get to do my attack. Oh, well, we just need to survive. We're at nine. Let's hope some of these guys run away. Do I grab a fate token? Oh, yeah, yeah. A fate token for defeating the enemy, right? 
All right, perfect, perfect. Oh, yes, the dice gods are against me today for sure. Compared to my play yesterday, the dice were against me like the first couple turns like today, kind of. Uh, but I had a better start in the story. Like I, I succeeded on all my rolls, so like it, it was a nice start. So I didn't have the extra enemy. And also the, the guys I drew yesterday, um, it was like... I think it was like just six fate points worth. There was no like 20 health guys. I, I never saw that before. It was like two kind of weaker guys it felt like. But today I've got like beefy dudes. Uh, and it's great. All right. So now this guy's going to activate, right? Uh, seven. So this guy's going to attack uh, the starting hero, a d6 plus two. Uh, he got two. So it's four damage. I'm going to try to dodge it. Uh, 19 is not a correct dodge. So what did I say it was? 2 plus 2. Uh, sure, I'll reduce 3 of it. So I take 1, down to 8. This guy is going to go. Uh, he got a 13, which is nothing happens. He twirls his two-handed hammer. Okay, that's good. Now the orc archer. I need these guys to go away. I need them to. I need to roll like eighteen to twenty, nineteen or twenty, eighteen or twenty. So I need to get like a nice, nice high roll here. A three. Uh, so this guy, the hero with the most damage, suffers a d six plus five. That guy needs to go away. A d six plus five. Uh, ten damage. I'm gonna try to dodge. Six or less. Fourteen. I don't dodge. So this is a ten. I'm going to prevent one, but that's too much, and I'm dead. Boom. I died. I got crushed. Crushed. Yeah, even with that heal card, it wouldn't have been enough uh, if I kept the heal card. I was really banking on, uh, like, even if I just healed two for, like, the last two rounds, that still would have been 10 damage. I need to have healed twice. So I need to have get this in play and, and heal twice. So yeah, that, that was rough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I find it's like failing on this. This is like the key. If you can't get this done and get this guy to play quick, because we had chances where these guys would have ran away, right? I think we had chances. Maybe we didn't. But I was really betting on that if I killed that guy this round, one of these guys at least would just run away. Chris is saying the first act is very dependent on the enemies you drew. And Volkera said, I shouldn't have reminded you about the Cowardly Goblin. <laughs> no, it was okay. I thought, yeah, I thought it's an easy scenario. I didn't realize the Cowardly Goblin doesn't count towards those draws. Uh, what else do we have in here? We could have saw an Orc Highwayman. But again, these orcs, they have like three, three shield. So even if I do damage them, they block a lot of it and they don't have to roll for it. It's just like automatically blocked. Yeah, where are these pirates? I didn't see like any of the pirates. That's okay. Yeah, that was quick. See, I saw like four rounds left. Chris says, I got hard enemies to begin with, but that, that happens. So that's one of the things of a game that's full of like stat checks Random dice rolls, random deck draws. It's like luck is heavy in this game. But uh, yeah, it definitely went way different than my play yesterday, which is cool. It's cool. So let's, uh, let's see what happens on a defeat. So we got a little story to read here. So after a defeat, uh, and it says, yeah. So what we would do is we take a doom counter because we got knocked out or whatever, but because we're only playing one hero, we have one doom counter, so we can't keep going. If you play with two-handed heroes, we could still keep going at this point. But then again, the enemies might have attacked, like, the other heroes. So, yeah. Uh, okay. The pirates and orcs overwhelm you and throw you into a dark jail cell. You are close to starvation when you stumble upon a secret passage that leads you to freedom. But by that time, the kidnappers and their victim are long gone. Read the effects of defeat in the adventure rules on page 16. Okay. Uh, where is this? Uh, in the case of defeat, the heroes have failed and the adventure ends. However, the heroes are allowed to try again. All reward cards the heroes gain during the adventure are discarded. 
The act is restarted according to the game instructions at the start of the relevant act. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. Vinyl saying you lost this game with the first enemy draw. I felt like that. As soon as we realized the Cowardly Goblin thing, and then we drew this big guy with the three armor, I was like, and, and this, I was super scared of this. Like, the one and two, he gets a D6 plus six. But this guy also, man. This guy who came later, right? Uh, the D6 plus five, he got that a lot. And this guy, a D yeah, they both had D6 plus 5. They're the same guy. Yeah, they rolled that a lot, right? Like the heavy damage. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. But that's cool. I don't know. It's an interesting game. I don't know, like, my mulligan, was my mulligan, like, bad? Because, like, I, I, I mulligan like this potion, right? And the heal 6 might have been very helpful early. Like, I could have played that in, like, the second or third round. When I, I lost, like, so much damage off that first round, I think it might have been really good to just keep that heal 6 but then again, that would be like a whole turn, just healing six. Kind of lame. And then I wouldn't have been playing the armor, and the armor did then help prevent stuff later. I don't know. I also noticed, uh, my play yesterday, I really quickly got to uh, th three ways to attack. I got like a magic, uh, uh, I had my archer, uh, my range attack, and I had a melee weapon pretty fast uh, in play. So I was able to do three attacks a turn. I didn't need to mulligan at all. I believe it. I believe it. But I didn't mulligan yesterday, and I won. So maybe that's that's it was that was where I lost to. <laughs> uh, roll an eight. Uh, you wake up from your nightmare and find it sunny outside, and you're prepared to head off for your adventure. <laughs> uh, healing six is better for one round than six rounds of preventing six damage. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it like the cost of that, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that's a look at Adventure, the Adventure Card Game. So we're going to be live tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we'll just start. So we're going to play the same hero. So unfortunately, we didn't win and get an experience to buy a card to put in our deck. I thought maybe we get to do that. Um, but we didn't. Or upgrade a stat would have been nice. That would have been nice. Um... And Jim says, once you learn your cards, it goes better. Yeah, that's what the rules are kind of explaining, right? Like, once you learn cards, you'll want to, like, mulligan and stuff. Um, but, yeah, we're going to experience more of these cards. We'll draw. So, you guys saw some of the cards in the deck. But we'll see more tomorrow. And you guys can help me out. Like, we'll, we'll make decisions and try to figure things out as we play live through it. Uh, but we're going to try the, uh, what is it called again? The Legacy of, Legacy of Wildenstein. So we're going to play this campaign. We're going to start with Act 1, and we'll go through the story. We'll make some rolls. We'll set up a combat. And based on how well it goes tomorrow or how the time goes, we may have to replay this one. And I'm okay. If we fail tomorrow, we'll definitely replay this one. And if we succeed, we'll try to go to the second act at least tomorrow. So it'll be a longer stream tomorrow. We're starting at 1 instead of 2. Uh, so we have some more time. And we're going we're gonna to try it. We're going to go into a real, a real campaign and see how far we can get. So this is just a tutorial. You can play this over and over again. You can change the difficulty, like I said. Uh, there's easy, normal, and you can keep trying, you know, difficult. And there's legendary. So there's like all a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, but I assume you do that after you really know the game and after you've upgraded your deck and built up your stats. Because remember, uh, we could have got experience and then we could raise up our stats, but we lost. And I'm not gonna replay this one. I've, I played it twice. It's kind of like not really that interesting. Uh, but I see how it teaches the game. But tomorrow we're going to get into it and we're going to set it up. And there's other stuff in the game. There is... I don't know what these are for, but there's these graves. So they'll come into play at some point. There's leaders can have action decks. So the leaders can have action decks and become more interesting rather than just trying to guess their name. Uh, there's also event decks that are built based on the act that we could be drawing from and things are happening. So tomorrow you're going to see more of the real game, but it's kind of like spoilery, right? So that's why I want to play just this tutorial mission to show you like what the game has. And then you can kind of stop there. But if you want to see spoilers, you want to see me play through the campaigns, 
Uh, again, we have expansions, thanks again to Jim. We have three or four more expansions that we can um, throw extra cards in, continue on. If you guys are watching these videos, liking these videos, if we have the viewers and you guys want to keep watching Adventuria, keep coming back. We'll keep watching it. Hit the like button, um, and we're going to keep continuing with it. But for sure, I'm going to play it for the next day or two, and we're going to play through what's in the core set. And we're going to try to get through all that and see what that's all about. And if enough people are watching and you guys care uh, and want to keep following along, uh, we can play into those expansions and keep going on the channel. I will probably still play those expansions. Not on the channel, though, if, if, if people aren't interested enough. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how the campaign goes. I, I want to see how the full game works. Um, but there is a demon, which I won't show, who has demon abilities. So that's a good sign. I'm looking forward to that if we get that far. But yeah, the next campaigns have like their own cards. Like, so there's like all these cards based on the act, uh, and like this many more henchmen in the in just the core box. So there's more more henchmen types that we're gonna see uh, mixed in there. Lots of stuff. And like I said, there are four heroes in the base game. Uh, so there is a dwarf, a okay, Arbosh, son of Angrax. So he has his own stats, his own abilities. And his own complete starter deck. So he's more of a fighter, I assume. Uh, there's a mage hero here, Miraban. Okay. Uh, she has her own deck of cards. And you can use these. Like, I can use some of these to deck build and change my deck up if I wanted. Um, and then there's this guy. Who's kind of weird. Let's see. He's a half, half elf rogue. Um, and he has his own deck of cards. So, like, tons of cards in the, just this base game. It's crazy. Tons of stuff in just the base game. And then, like I said, we have the rewards. We didn't get to draw from one, but hopefully we'll see some of these after our next adventure. And we'll get to, you get to put up to three of these. As you, as you get these and add them to your hero sheet, uh, and before you start an adventure, you can pick up to three of these to put in your deck. But you have to remove other cards. You have to remove other cards. Uh, ba 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 ba. So Buell's saying it definitely seems to be interesting. There isn't much in the way of similarities to Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. But isn't Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, you're like, you build those decks, uh, and they're all just decks that are basically like these cards. Like, they're all just like, you're doing stat tests. Like, it's just like these where you're trying to just like, you know, uh, six, see what you roll and see what happens. Like, it's literally like every card in, in the Adventure Card Game kind of looks like this, where it just has values and like what happens. I feel like it's just a bunch of that, which is in this, it's just instead it's the enemies, uh, enemies coming off of a deck. I don't know. It seems similar to basically what I saw. Totally, totally different. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm generalizing it too much then, but yeah, when I looked into it, it just seemed like a lot of dice rolling and checks. And Jim says from his experience playing this with two heroes or two players mitigates the luck. I agree, but I want to see how this game worked at a true solo game. Because they put it's one player on the box, and I like the way the rules don't really change for solo to playing two or three heroes, like single hero, true solo. There's no extra rules to learn. It's kind of nice. It's, it's just the standard rules work. I like when games do that. But every enemy is hammering you, and you're only good at certain things. Your hero's kind of weak in certain areas, and I don't have another hero to kind of balance off some of my weaknesses. So, yeah. Oh, it is very different from Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. So the only similarities is it's just another RPG company making an adventure card game off of the role-playing game. That's really the only similarities. And <laughs> uh, Dark saying, what is your favorite games that have random map like Mage Knight and Robinson Crusoe? Uh, I've never played Robinson Crusoe. I have it, but I have not played it yet. That'll come eventually on the channel. Uh, we'll play that soon, actually, I think, if I can learn it. But I have other games that just showed up today. Um, I like uh, any of the FFG ones, uh, the app games, like Lord of the Rings, Journey's Middle Earth, Mansion of the Madness 2nd Edition. Those are my favorite games that actually hide the map and enemies and objectives from you. Like, those beat Mage Knight uh, in that respect, for sure. Because you, you know nothing. You, you didn't even build the deck of tiles. Like, in Mage Knight, you shuffle and you kind of know what's in there and how many of each tile there are. 
But in those games, those games do it best out of all the games I've played. The FFG app-driven board games do it the best. They hide the enemies from you. They hide the... Um, they hide everything from you. You don't even know, like, when you're searching what is even possible. Um, but you don't know what's in the next room. You don't know what the next tile is. You don't know what's in that cave. Uh, and yeah, I just love the way everything's kind of handled hidden in the app. I love that. That's the best random map experiences that I've had. Uh... <laughs> I don't like the dice rolling in Mansion of Madness. I do like that game though, but it's not my favorite. But I do like for those types of games, like if I'm just looking at random map generation, those games do it best, I think. They do it best. <laughs> Okaria, thank you so much for helping out. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yeah, and I guess Descent is going to do the same thing, right? Journeys in the Dark or Leg Legends of the Darkness or Dark or whatever. That, that one's going to do that stuff too, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that's Adventuria, the adventure card game. Uh, if you want more information, go hit up BGG. Um, maybe you'll find some stuff there. <laughs> yeah jim saying it in chat the lord of the rings uh i guess yeah lord of the rings journeys in middle earth the success draw off the decks yes that's better of course rolling the same d20 and d6 over and over again with like very little kind of alter alteration to it because the, the cool part with like gloomhaven and lord of the rings journeys in middle earth like we've moved beyond just standard dice right like um you're kind of customizing your dice in those games i love the way you can modify that deck and change what's in it to increase or decrease your odds and as you draw cards you kind of know what's left and kind of what your chances are so you can make judgment calls better in this game it's like okay i can increase my stat but i'm still rolling that same die and there's always a chance you could just fall flat on your face. And you have the fate tokens, but they're just re-rolls. And there are some cards that let you set the value. I guess I have my special ability. I forgot about, but I could have set the value to three once on an on a on a uh on a range attack roll. But the only one that really mattered was when I was attacking the boss and I kind of succeeded. So I didn't really want to use it yet. But yeah, the only thing is the fate points, really. Like, oh, there's that one card that lets you re-roll a missed roll and you minus the thing by three or something. Uh, that's kind of neat. But again, it's like not enough. It's not enough, I think. For a game that's designed in 2016 or came out in 2016 or 17, to be honest, this the game design of this feels like a game I would think from like 2008 to 2010, it kind of feels like, based on the mechanics, the, the components... The feel of it, the art, the the graphic design, the rules, it feels like a, like a, you know, 2010, 2012 kind of Kickstarter or like, you know, a 2008 to 2012-ish kind of game. That's my feel of it. it. I'm super surprised this is like a 2016, 2017 Kickstarter game. Uh, that's just how it feels to me. Doesn't mean it's not good. It's fun. But yeah, it just feels like it, it, I'm playing it in 2021, so this is like even worse for the game, right? It's like in 2021, we've seen other games that have done it better. I don't know when this game was designed in 2016 or 17 when it came out. At the time, better stuff like had already come out that had like moved on beyond the rolling a d20. But I know this game is trying to stay close to its RPG roots, but it's obviously targeted at the board gamer, so. I don't know what to say there, but I don't know if it's coming across correctly. But again, there's expansion content for this game that has come out since. So I don't know if adding that expansion stuff in, playing some of those campaigns, if it's spiced up and they fix some things or there's some newer cards or they've changed any of the mechanics in the game to make it more interesting. But in this game, it's just like definitely straightforward. Now, here's the other thing you have to know. 
you guys who have followed the channel for a long time know, I like my games meaty and rich, but sometimes you have to have it. You need those games in your collection that don't take like two hours to read the rule book and then another hour to read the FAQ to get up to speed on the game to get deep into the game like Gloomhaven if I were preparing to play Gloomhaven on the channel I'd be still punching out cardboard right like it, it takes forever not to mention getting into the rules finding player aids reading other people's versions of the rules reading the FAQs reading BGG posts trying to figure out how to play Gloomhaven correctly it took forever and still didn't play it correctly our first time we're still struggling. This game is nice that it's like, it's definitely not on that level. What is this, what is this complexity of this game, right? Uh, where is it? This game is only a 2.35, okay? It's green. So I can't compare this game to Gloomhaven, to Mage Knight, to these other games, right? But I can kind of compare it more to like Heroes of Tyrannoth and Lord of the Rings, Rings of Middle Earth and these kind of things, right? You can compare it to those kind of games. And yeah, it, it's like, it's nice to have a game in your collection that just, it, it's not too complicated. And it's as simple as playing out some assets, buffing up your stats, rolling dice to try to increase your odds, and you succeed or you don't succeed. Like... That's kind of nice. If you're like a role-playing game player, that's kind of what you do, right? You kind of play the game along and you roll dice for checks. And you, you level up your guy and you roll more dice for checks, right? So it has that and that's what it does. But yeah. Good overview. Cooperative, critical hits, deck bag and pool building. And management. I just want to see what other. Yeah, like it has, it has lots of the things you kind of want in, in like a fantasy adventure card game kind of thing, right? Like this is what you want in your fantasy game is all these kind of mechanisms. So Hans is saying basic rules are still the same, but scenarios and expansions has a different feeling. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Oh, cool. Oh, Matt, I know there's more to RPGs. I, I know there's more to RPGs. I, they just don't interest me. I watch them played like live and like, yeah, the whole like, you know, dungeon master and, you know, like using your imagination and stuff like that. I'm more of like a, I don't know, like strategy and mechanics and stuff like that is kind of how I look at it. I know role playing games are beyond that, but they're just not my cup of tea. Um, but the checks and the leveling up and stuff is definitely pulled from that, for sure. You can see that. What am I missing from RPGs, Matt, that, that you would say? Like, I know I'm definitely simplifying. I'm definitely simplifying. I'm just saying, like, what came from the RPGs. Like, there is story to this. But it's like, I'm not making up any of the story. Yeah, this feels like Heroes of Tyrannoth. This feels like Warhammer Adventure, Warhammer Quest Adventure card game, because that's what Heroes of Tyrannoth is based off of, right? That's what this feels like for sure. Um, but yeah, we're back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're continuing on with the Legacy of Wildenstein, and we're going to try that adventure through over the next couple days live. So come and check that out for sure. Uh, we'll be playing through that. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for watching and playing along. RPGs have story, puzzles, and combat. There's lots of modern RPGs where it's more than roll, fail, turn over. It's creating a story together. Yeah, the story together part, though, I don't, I don't know if this has that, but I guess it kind of does, like a light version of that, right? But all I'm saying is it definitely pulls the, the checks. The die rolling and the checks are pulled like straight from role-playing games. Like any role-playing game I want, yeah, I watch. There's like a lot of the making up the story, having fun. That part's there, but that's not in this game. So that's why I didn't mention that. But it definitely has the whole roll a D whatever 
What did you get? This is what happens. That part of it, that's what I was saying, comes from role-playing games. I wasn't saying that's all a role-playing game is, but it definitely has that stuff from it, right? D&D is a board game where role-playing is optional. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, oh, it depends on your group too, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely the players at the table would definitely affect how good an RPG session is. That, I, that I could see. That I could see. Uh, Daniel's saying, if you ever want to play Pathfinder adventure card game, the digital versions have free-to-play on mobile. I think I downloaded that on my phone before, but I, I, and I started doing the tutorial, and then I just never continued it. I forgot about it to go back to it. That was, that was a couple years back. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Well, that's going to be it for today's stream. We'll be back tomorrow, like I said, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks for spending time with us here. Thanks for going through uh, Avent. W's are pronounced like V's. A Aventuria. Aventuria, the card game, adventure card game. Uh, we'll get back into more of it. Hopefully, this gives you an idea of what the game is about. And you'll see more of that tomorrow. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye bye.